you know, going back to the last podcast, having multiple avenues of approach. People didn't know jujitsu and just got, you know, destroyed by Horace Gracie, you know, bigger, stronger, whatever, didn't matter. Jujitsu would just win. And now everybody knows jujitsu, everybody knows wrestling, everybody knows boxing. So now you're gonna get to a point in the near future where it's about the athletes, you know, and it, we're, we're close to that now, where it's really about the athlete that's executing. And, and so I think that's cool. It's not quite as fun for me as seeing, you know, the skill set, because basically everyone's gonna have the same skill sets shortly, you know, and it's gonna be boiled down to who is the better athlete. Now there, there will still be some, some piece of creativity in there because, and creativity can win. So, you know, I, I always give the example of, of guitar, right? If you go to any guitar store in England or in America, and you hang up a sign and say, hey, I need a experienced guitar player that can play all these songs. You'll get all kinds of applications and they can really do it. But the question is who has the creativity to break out and create something new? And so that's, that's what you're gonna start to see. Still, I believe that will, will stay in the game somewhat is who can be creative if you're trying to become the very best, that's what you should try to do is wake up and try to be the best that you can be every single day. Don't do anything that's going to hinder your experience. Now, a lot of times when you're trying to become successful or become the best you can be, it's going to be a lot of things that you need to take away from your life and which are going to improve so much more. It's going to be a lot of taking away. It's going to be more beneficial than adding to. You can get to the point to where you add too much stuff to your life. You add this, you add that. You do this to make sure that this happens this way. But a lot of times you just need to take things away that aren't working for you or things that are negative or things that aren't doing what you want them to. And a lot of times that can be people. There are so many people out there who claim that they want to help you. They want the best for you, but they're actually trying to profit off of their own schemes to use you. So they're not using you for the best of your interest. They're using you for the best of their interest. So it's all about figuring out who you need in your inner circle, going out and finding a group of people who's going to truly love and care for you in numerous ways and let you know when things aren't going well, that things aren't going well. And if things are going great, they're going to praise you and be excited for you. But if they feel bad that things are going well for you, then that's when you need to know you should kick them out of your circle. Because if they're hindering your life and not helping it, then you need to get rid of them immediately because people that are pulling you down and stopping you aren't going to be able to help you in the long run. So it's all about addition by subtraction. I like those words, self-help or self-management or self-improvement. I don't really like what those words have come to mean these days because there's a lot of people out there that are constantly trying to improve themselves by looking for the one change the one change, right? The one change in their life that's gonna make their dreams come true. And even worse, on top of that, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of self-help gurus and these hyperactive motivational speakers and these other self-appointed modern Zen yoga warriors. They're trying to sell the one thing. They're trying to sell the nine steps or the enlightened path that's going to allow you to unlock all of your human potential and fulfill the dreams so you can live the life that you've always wanted to live. Now, I'm no guru and I definitely don't claim to be. I'm just a man. But I will tell you this. It isn't one thing and it isn't 10 things and it isn't 100 things. It isn't a quick path and there are no shortcuts when I started taking the lessons that I had learned growing up in the SEAL teams and applying them and seeing how they worked and learning either solidifying them or sometimes making small adjustments to them. So the, all the principles that I ended up talking about and I ended up writing about and that I ended up employing when I was in Task Unit Bruiser, all those had kind of been solidified somewhat when I was in my first combat deployment as a platoon commander in Baghdad. So the, the things that I talk about all the time, cover and move, you absolutely have to cover and move. Keeping things simple, prioritize and execute, decentralized command. I hadn't quite turned those into the solid principles that they eventually became when I started teaching them to the young SEALs, but that's where I learned them. And so those are the lessons. Those lessons were, were really clear and I learned them, you know, I learned them from the, the Vietnam SEALs that raised me in the SEAL teams. Those guys that taught me the initial, the initial things. I mean, I've, I've had a guy in my podcast named Roger Hayden. He's the guy that taught me cover and move. And there was other guys that were saying it, but he kind of explained, hey, here's what's going on. Because he had been to Vietnam, multiple deployments, 
and he had been in a lot of firefights and he explained to me, this is what's gonna happen. And I was listening and I remembered it. So then when I was on deployment, my first combat deployment, and saw those things unfold and realized, okay, this is exactly what he was talking about. And so it solidified those things in my mind, for sure. Hello, Staten Island fifth graders that are participating in the Readers Are Leaders Challenge. I wanna tell you that that is a great challenge. And it's a very true statement. Readers are leaders. I was in the military and I was a leader in the military. And when I get out of the military, I started working with business leaders and the successful leaders in the military and the successful leaders in business, they read. Why does reading make you a better leader? Well, when you read a lot, it makes you a better writer and it makes you a better speaker. And when you're a better writer and a better speaker, that makes you a better communicator. And the better you can communicate, the better you can lead. Even your borough president, Jim Otto, he's your leader. He's the leader of Staten Island. And he's a real big time reader. He actually read the first book I wrote and reached out to me to help give a hand with this Readers Are Leaders Challenge. I'm happy to do so. I hope you enjoy the book that I wrote, Way of the Warrior Kid, and I hope you enjoy all the other books that you read. And I want you to go out there, be a reader, be a leader, read, lead, and win. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please go ahead and like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let us know what you thought down in the comment section below.